It might sound crazy, but this spider helped cure my arachnophobia, and now I work with the world's scariest spiders on a day-to-day -day basis. If you look past all the legs and webs, I think there's a chance it'll help cure yours too. Check this out. This is a very nice sized yellow garden spider, one of my favorite orb weavers. There we go. Come on in. You're all right. Have a look at this spider right here. This is the yellow garden spider, probably one of the most famous spiders here in the US. Always comes out in the summer. You'll see it in your garden. You'll see it out in your backyard. You'll see it out hiking. They're pretty much everywhere and they're pretty prominent. They're big. They have that striking yellow and black coloring. You can't miss them. But this is actually a really special spider for me because this is one of the key spiders that helped me get a lot more comfortable with these little eight-legged arachnids. Let's see if she'll hang out on my hands. Look at that. Now, the reason this spider is so special to me is this species was actually the first non-jumping spider that I ever free handled. And let me tell you, my first couple times attempting it, my instant reaction was, yee! You know, I know you've probably seen me handle lots of different spiders here on the channel, and that reaction probably surprises you. But truthfully, for whatever reason, I could not get myself to work with spiders. They made me so nervous. They freaked me out. They grossed me out. But working with one of these spiders showed me that they're literally just like any other arthropod. Since I was very young, I've been picking up praying mantises, crayfish, assassin bugs, grasshoppers, katydids, all kinds of things like that. But spiders, even though they're arthropods too, I've always had this block. I don't know necessarily if it was that I expected them to bite me, but for the longest time, I could not wrap my head around spiders. The thing is, like, it's why I make videos just like this about curing your arachnophobia, because I get it. I've been there. And for me, I've always been extremely curious about what weird creatures are lurking out there. But if spiders were gonna keep me from actually investigating them, then I wouldn't really get anywhere. And I've found that the more we push past fear, the more rich and fascinating the world actually becomes. And if you're finding videos like this to be helpful with your personal journey with arachnophobia or even just getting comfortable with insects and spiders, consider liking this video. It'll help it spread to more viewers just like you so that they too can overcome their fears and we can all discover the secrets of the natural world together. And for me, the yellow garden spider really was one of the biggest spiders that helped me overcome my fear. Now that she's comfortable, she's walking around and her demeanor is very relaxed. You know, this is not an animal that is overly stressed or overly agitated and she's showing me absolutely no aggression. And that was the observation I had my first time free handling one of these spiders as well. I'm like, wow, it just, it feels like any old insect or something walking on me. It's feet, just you can just feel the little hooks grabbing on. Feels like an eight-legged grasshopper. Look at the way she moves. Such peculiar creatures. And what I found was the more I worked with the spider, the less frightening she became. I quickly got very comfortable just kind of watching her explore my hand, just like this one's doing right now. You can see she's webbing me up. It's a lot of safety lines in case she falls. It's kind of interesting to see how the spinnerets work too. They're very very unusual anatomy. And that's kind of the thing is, a lot of these animals like spiders, they freak us out because oftentimes their bright coloration and their spindly little legs hold us at bay. And that's, that's not too bad. That's actually, that's actually this animal's biology doing its job. That bright coloration in nature is called aposomatic coloration. It's usually warning colors. And that tells us that something has the potential to be highly venomous a really painful bite or sting. But not only have I actually tested the bite of the spider and known that it's not very serious, but science knows that this spider is actually not that toxic. What's likely happening is this bright coloration is actually a form of mimicry. These guys are called garden spiders for a reason. They like to frequent areas with lots of flying insects. And those can be areas where there's lots of flowers and lots of pollinators. And what are the most famous or infamous pollinators? Bees and wasps and bees and wasps come in that yellow, black, and white coloration. It's thought in some circles that what this spider is actually mimicking are the coloration of like yellow jackets or hornets, which keep a lot of predators from bothering them. Look at how chunky this spider is. There's probably a lot of nutrition packed in this animal 
And given that it's not super toxic, there are a lot of things that would love to turn this into a meal. But if potential predators are too worried about getting a really painful sting or bite to actually attempt to give this a taste test, this animal gets to survive to fight another day. Look at her go there. She's just webbing me all up. Hi, buddy, look at you. Now, orb weaver web is incredibly strong, even stronger pound for pound than steel, which is kind of remarkable given how small these creatures are. A small little arthropod you can find in your backyard is able to chemically produce a substance that is sticky and stronger than one of the strongest metals we know. That's kind of crazy. When these guys are in your garden, if you are a gardener, you know these guys are great at eating a lot of the insects that would be damaging to your flowers and vegetables, things like grasshoppers, katydids, and even some moths and butterflies, because those things get caught in this guy's web, she turns them into lunch, and they don't end up eating your plants. This is an incredibly helpful spider, an incredibly beautiful spider, and as you can see right here, not an animal that has any interest in being a threat to people. And that is why it helped me a ton in my journey to overcome my arachnophobia. And I think there's a good chance it might help you as well. You know, I've always had a dream of exploring the wilderness and, and just finding some of the most iconic and, and unique creatures that we share our planet with. I don't think that I would be where I am today if I hadn't worked to overcome my arachnophobia. And since that first ever spider all those years ago, I have worked with a lot of really insane species of spiders, including some of the most venomous species in the world. Here in the US, you've probably heard of the Black Widow, but it actually has a cousin whose venom, drop for drop, is even more toxic. That spider is the rather unassuming Brown Widow, and I actually went down to Florida to try my hand at catching one. If you want to see that video and learn more about these really unusual spiders, check it out right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.